I don't know well, if you can hear me well. Yes, we can. Perfect. So I'll see you again um, recording. I don't know if like um, I will ask your help today to sure. with the presentation as yes, well. Yes, yes, sure. Let me let me share okay. it. Thank you, Georgia. Okay. So nice, nice to meet you all of you. I'm really glad I'm here. Um, so I can share um, a little bit about my experience. And um, thank you, Georgia, for uh, the presentation as well. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself before we began the webinar today. I'm an air professional dedicated to the field of human resources. As Georgia mentioned, um, I have more than 10 years of experience in the whole complete process of people management um, in on the whole part of recruitment, training, and also uh, development as well. Um, I've worked in different uh, projects uh, with different teams, uh, multicultural teams as well, and also covering different kinds of uh, professional profiles for multinational companies in, in diverse sectors. And I would say both nationally in Spain and in Latin America. Um, actually, I'm working as an HR and talent manager in a consultancy startup um, dedicated to product manage management and product design as well. Um, this company helps uh, to design uh, and develop digital products. So I changed also a little bit my experience from multinationals to startups. Um, at, as Georgia mentioned, at the same time, I've been uh, building a career as a coach, um, working um, with different types of professionals, helping them to enhance um, and identify their talents and so they can devise you know, a career plan aligned more to their values, um, so it could co contribute to their uh, personal and professional development uh, through training, uh, different kinds of solutions and also um, powerful conversations, I would say. Um, I'm also an expert on, on giving them this um, a companionship and empowering them with ambition so they can also um, rediscover their, their talents and also that so they can transmit it in um, their value as in a natural and strategic way. So that's one of the things I would like to share with you today um, with this uh, webinar regarding how to land a great interview. OK, um, so I'm really pleased to be here. So let's begin. Um, one of the things I would like to say, as Georgia mentioned, um, I know this session is going to be recorded, but um, if you feel comfortable to to share your screen, I will really be pleased to see you to see your faces um, so I can feel also that maybe you're here and not only listen to me, but also I want to invite you if like if you to feel free to make questions. I know we're going to have at the end of the webinar um, a couple of minutes to um, also have like this q and A. I know maybe you can have a lot of questions. Um, I also invite you if like if you're feeling it on the moment and you want to interrupt me, um, it's OK too. We can the, the important thing is that you feel that you go here with all the information, I would say, all the most of the information for you to do and to um, do the great, a great interview. Um, so let's make this not just also like a, a monologue. <laughs> so I'll be really happy to have um, you having questions along the whole way. OK, so OK, let's start. As your, Georgia mentioned, um, I know interviews can be really scary um, just to make a quick um, introduction. So um, I would say specifically we not prepare ourselves for that. So one of the things I want to share with you in this webinar is uh, specifically my experience through all my professional um, in different types of um, companies. So we can prepare ourselves to how we can address, you know, we can go through the general preparation, um, how to land a great interview, what you can expect, and how we can go through also to the interview questions as well, that I know it's the most maybe scariest things when we are preparing ourselves for an interview. So we can begin with the first part. That is um, the purpose of the interview. We can uh, go to the next slide, Julia. And um, you know, the purpose of the interview is uh, something simple as a conversation, you know, in which you and your employee exchange information 
So let's see in the other slide um, what this conversation is all about. We, I would say the main interview has two parts and um, our main objective is to make ourselves known to be able to obtain or continue advancing in the recruitment process. Of course, with the objective of getting an offer and a job for which we are applying. No? Um, so the biggest objective also is to the employer employees. Sorry, it's to find out, um, you know, what you have to offer, your skills, your abilities, um, the basic knowledge. Um, but also we we share as well and we also um, they want uh, you to share with them um, about your you know personality, your interests and your character. So um, let's pass to the other slide, Georgia. But this is like the main focus um, on the first part of the interview. So you know, as I was saying, um, they want to determine, you know, is this the best candidate for the position? You know, we are talking about here about the character, as I was talking about, um, you know, about your skills, about your abilities, and you know overall about your basic knowledge for the role. Also, the other main objective for them is to know um, if they could see if this ca the candidate is uh, the one they are looking for for the job. Um, regarding your also competencies, your specifically know your abilities, and also um, they will say the objective is you know if this candidate will fit in in the company overall, in the culture company, not only in the role. I must say, and also um, the, the, the main objective is, you know, if this candidate is the best one for the position overall. So in the next slide, I also said that it's not, you know, like a monologue I was saying at the beginning as well. It's a two way conversation, so you can also uh, throughout the process can have the opportunity to validate some things for yourself, you know. Um, so you can also ask you um, when you're doing the interview as well. I will say always an interview is an opportunity to also discover that if we want this job, um, if this the job I can that I can do that I I feel I will feel pleased doing it. Um, is this the company that fits uh, fits sorry my career at this time? And depending on the moment you are personally and professionally, uh, of course. Um, does this job offer me, you know, the opportunities I want to um, for I want to for my, our professional and personal development? And also, one of the things I'm really um, I, I really share with with um, my coaches is that one of the things you can ask yourself is, does this job really align with my actual values? No, not only my professional development, but also my personal development as well. I think that's really interesting thing that we forget sometimes when we do the interview, not only that they are asking about our overall experience, but we can do also um, well, evaluate these things as well. So after we have, you know, like them know the main objective of the interview, the most important thing we can say is what to expect. You know, there's a lot of uh, interview formats um, that I could I can speak about and we're going to see it through um, so we can understand um, the different types we can, you know, go through when at, at the moment. Sometimes the recruiter um, tells us how it's the format they're going to manage. Sometimes they're not. Um, but at least if we know overall the, the different types of formats, maybe we can prepare ourselves um, for the, the for that moment, you no? Know? So we can pass the other slide, Georgia. We're gonna see the different types of formats. So I was saying, you no. Know, um, probably you imagine um, answering. Um, these uh, different type of formats um, and you also imagine yourself, you know, sitting across the table from a Harry manager. I know that's a little bit scary, um, but you know, um, there are nowadays uh, employees increasingly use different types of interviews to screen candidates in unique ways. Um, I would say these are the main ones uh, they nowadays um, use. So 
Um, each type of interview, you know, requires a different strategy that works um, in one setting and that help you to succeed. Um, so the first one I would say, um, know the kind of interview you're walking into if you can ask the recruiter and also prepare yourself and have the right plan of attack for the type of interview you're gonna um, go through. So the first one, um, we can see it's like the formal and informal interviews. When we talk, no, that's, um, yeah, there. Thank you, Georgia. When we talk about, I'm gonna go really um, shortly through what, every one of them, so you can more or less have the context of um, each one of them. So when I talk about formal um, interviews, we are talking more about one-to-one -one interviews. That's the most common uh, type of interview. These are the kinds of interviews that are most probably familiar um, with, you know, last more or less 30 to 60 minutes conversation. It could be with the recruiter or it could be um, from someone from the team or it, it could be also um, a hiring manager. Uh, of the interview more um, further, but when we speak about also informal interviews, um, I can give an example. It could be like an, a meal interview. Sometimes they will invite you to like a meal, so it could be um, more likely like an informal one where they explore your personality or a cultural fit to the company as well. Um, when we talk about Panel interviews, some organizations like to involve multiple task members. Um, it could be people of the team overall. Um, so they conduct different um, panel interviews where a single candidate is questioned by, cyber, by several people at the same time. Um, so all the other one is group interviews is more or less similar as the panel interviews. Um, but organizations use them um, to quickly find right the right candidate. Um, sometimes they do want to do um, faster recruitment process, so that's why they support themselves uh, through the panel ones or the group ones because it's quicker so that you can meet the, the whole overall team so they can know um, maybe if you're the one that fits the, the well. Um, the size of the group always will vary, um, but employees typically limit the number of interviewers. So um, just do not get um, the candidate nervous because we are actually we're not really used to be like in a panel or group interviews as well. So at least it could be for from one, two, two or three um, persons in the in the interview. OK. Um, so then we we have the situational, behavioral, and competi competency-based interviews. Um, that's our like a specific type of interview as well, where they go further to your skills and your abilities. Sometimes they're really short ones, um, more or less about 30 minutes, but depending on the company, it could be also like 60 minutes, um, the whole overall interview. And then we have uh, the phone or video call interview. That's our uh, mostly common nowadays with the remote work. And I would say sometimes it's also a quicker interviews. Um, I would say the recruiters use them a lot nowadays. Um, and I would say the main focus is to learn about your current situation and, and get a first approach um, regarding to your experience so they can validate if you are um, the candidate more or less are looking for to go uh, further on the recruitment process. OK. So we can we can pass your yeah, I know it's uh, a tough market out there. Um, I know we have a lot of competition and unemployment, so um, I would say and invite you to don't be scared and, and keep grabbing these opportunities. I would say every interview um, that you can um, go further with, it's an opportunity to practice. I would say the most important things about interviews is practice and, and keep knowing ourselves and keep knowing our, um, how to answer and go through the different types of interview as well. So the most important thing we can pass the other one, um, Georgia, is um, that going further to these interviews, we can manage to communicate our value as a professional. I would say that's the most important thing and make yourself irresistible throughout your story. No, 
So one of the things we're going to see in the next slide, it's um, we're going to review together some general interview tips um, as a common mistakes and also things that it could be, uh, we can say like most have, you know. Um, as a common mistakes, um, one of the things is that um, the recruiters and the hiring manager is to be um, pre brief, you know, to be concise enough on when you're answering uh, the, the different types of questions. Um, common mistakes that we made is also to not be clear in the change of from one position to another. Sometimes they ask you, you know, what you leave your current job or your last job, job for your current job. And we have to be really clear about the change. Sometimes we don't give as much information for the recruiters and that gives doubts to them about how you exit, you know. Also, it's um, not being transparent. I would say it's really important to not hide information. And I would say the last one that is, I know it's a tricky one, but um, I know it's um, hard to not be nervous as uh, in an interview, but we should try to um, uh, mitigate those ner ner feelings of nervousness before um, by preparing ourselves. Sometimes a recruiter can notice um, after the way we, we talk, the way we express ourselves, if we are a little bit nervous. So we can try to work on that before. And must have, um, one important or the most important thing is to have the context. Um, you can prepare yourself before. Um, we are going to see uh, later the star method, but you can prepare yourself regarding the actions and give examples about your current job, uh, the functions you're um, doing in, um, or in your um, last experience. And I would say this is the most important thing always. Um, the key is to give real examples and also with metrics and results, achievements are really important that you can talk about that and justify your answers with maybe percentage or numbers. That's a really good thing as well. Um, also, um, uh, you can you have to speak and that's a really uh, um, important tip is that you speak in first person as well. Um, and also, we don't have to um, forget about researching the company, and we're going to see it in the next slide. Um, knowing the company is uh, one of the most important aspects before uh, going further through the interview process. And, and of course, the first uh, interview that you have. Um, every office has different, um, specifically dress codes also. And the culture is really different. We can talk about multinationals and then um, startups. Um, you can see uh, it's a whole different um, experience. So you you have to know which dress code the office use. And it's I know it can be um, a challenge to figure out what to wear that day, even though it's if it's remote or it's a presence, but. Um, always selecting an appropriate interview assemble. I would say it requires research for the company in a first step to have a clear idea of how you can present yourself uh, to that day at the interview. OK, so we can go to through the next slide. Um, as I was saying, the way you present yourself, um, it subtly suggests um, your understanding of the role and the company culture and the business purpose. So we should manage to dress according to the organizational dress code, um, and the one that you're seeking as well. I know that dress codes nowadays, um, depending on the company, are being reconsidered, the policies, uh, dress code policies, sorry, because of the increase in the remote um, work. But I would say the image is a really important thing. Uh, we, still, we still have to try to stick to uh, the guidelines for project a professional image. So we, we're going to see in the next slide different kinds of tips so we can dress for success. I would say the first one and, and the main one um, is that there is no right to way to dress. You know, there's no right way to dress because um, as I was saying, um, there's no one uh, specific approach preparing for your interview outfit. It, it's going to always depend on the type of the company. So first we have to research and um, what you wear for one company may be not right for interviewing with another one. If I can give an example, when I, wa um, when I was working in L'Oreal, 
um, we used to go like really dressed up. We're going to see the different type of business casuals and business, um, um, their corporate attires. But when nowadays that I'm working at this um, startup, the mm. environment is really different. Um, I can go through sneakers, you know, it's more relaxed. So I would say there's like no one right way to dress. Um, the first thing is to research the company. So the second one is um, the dress for the work environment, as you just mentioned. It's not only um, for the company, but for the environment. Depending on the, the on the position, depending on the role you're applying, um, what you were to, um, I would say, um, it's not the same thing um, applying for a marketing job. So to apply to a um, M and A um, job on a bank, you know, it's a different type of job, and also for a construction job, you know, if you're gonna be on the field, also the 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 tire is gonna be. Um, uh, different, no. Um, even though, even if the role also, uh, with you, if you are applying is remote, um, follow the the company dress for the the interview, no. You can also um, one of the things I always suggest that you can also check the company's website, uh, check the image also on Google Maps um, when you do this research, so you can see more or less um, which which type of dress they are projecting, or which kind of dress they are projecting. Um, as I was saying, dress for the role. Uh, always look for the company style. One of the things I really also highlight in, in this part is the type of clothes you are um, thinking on use um, for the interview. Um, I suggest um, neutral slacks, um, dress shirts, uh, jackets, you know, are safe and appropriate choices. Um, I would say also, um, I, I always like to give these examples. Um, the, there's, there's difference between someone that has uh, tattoos maybe on their arms, you know, um, depending on the job that and the role that person is applying. And also um, maybe in some companies like you can use t-shirts and it doesn't mind like show up the, the tattoos, but maybe in a bank or in a corporate, you no know, uh, multinational company, um, maybe you have to cover it, no? So think every um, about that uh, when you're gonna dress in the, for that interview. And I will say that the most important thing is always ask. You can always ask if you already do your research. You don't forget that you can always ask um, for the hiring recruiter or uh, the, sorry, hiring manager if you can talk to them or the recruiter as well um, before going or presenting yourself uh, through the interview. Um, also, one important thing I also. Uh, we, we forget about um, a lot is um, to take into account the weather because it's, uh, you know, depending if it's remote or um, presence, uh, presential um, interview. For example, we, we must not forget to um, see the weather because we don't know so it's, it's going to rain. We're not going to get to the interview all wet. So that's also an important thing that we sometimes forget. Um, also know the types of corporate attires, as I was saying. Um, there are different kinds of corporate attires. One of them is business professional, um, business casual, and the other is um, more or less smart casual, depending on the type of the, of the company. But it's important to know, you can ask always directly to regarding these um, corporate attires, uh, which is the, the one that best suits the best to the company. And the other most important thing, um, so we can pass to the other um, slide, is um, um, I think um, before Georgia, I don't know if you, if you, yeah, I think you already, yeah, exactly. Um, is uh, what not to wear, you know, uh, for an interview. Um, I would say low cut shirts, uh, avoid top, um, specifically maybe the girls, um, short skirts, um, anything with a lot of skin, you know and neon colors. I would say neon colors, um, it's not like the best attire to go through um, an interview. So now we can go through um, how we prepare, no? how we prepare, what are the main things that we should take into account uh, to prepare ourselves for an interview. You know? um, so let's see the different um, suggestions that we should look out to prepare ourselves when we um, are thinking on this first 
um, in uh, interview. We can go to the next slide, Georgia. Thank you. Um, so the first thing is, um, as I was um, saying, um, go and research the company. I would say just that's the main thing, not regarding also the clothes, but also regarding um, about the uh, mission and vision of the company, the values. Um, it's really important that you don't go to the interview without any kind of information about the company because sometimes there are recruiters that maybe they don't ask you directly about the company, but there sometimes I, I do um, ask you questions directly for the company that if you have some information, that if you research about the job, um, the company, where is it, um, in, we, in what countries uh, the company has presence. I know a little bit about if you can not only about the company but you found information about the position and um, the area that you're applying it's uh, I would say um, it's a really um, really important thing um, also review the job description it's really important to go through the job description when we are preparing ourselves sometimes most of the questions um, that the hiring manager and the recruiter the HR department um, go through uh, along the interview. Most of them, not all, all of them, but are in the job description. Um, it's a way to prepare ourselves so we can also highlight our skills, our abilities um, that go uh, slightly um, in what they are asking for us on the job description. So that's really important thing. And also, so you can, we can see, we're gonna see it later, but also as you can write down questions that you have regarding the role and the position, you can take it out from the job description as well. If you're not clear, you have doubts, uh, you can take it from there. Um, the other thing is important thing is to master your message. Um, we talk a, um, a lot, sorry, we talk a lot and we work a lot in Pro Hire Me with elevator pitch. I would say it's our um, one of the most important um, tools we use to uh, master the message of the candidate and, and it will help you master also your answers and how would you add to the role and to the position, what's your main value for the, for the position. You can also um, use the elevator pitch to prepare yourself if you don't know it before. Um, I suggest it like a, um, it's a really uh, tool, um, important tool that we use and it could be really helpful for you. Um, prepare also for the questions you will be asked. Um, you, your career, your aspirations, um, why you want to change your mo main motivation um, for this uh, job, for this position, um, what are you looking for? And also we're gonna see more questions about regarding um, our skills and our abilities. Um, we can prepare ourselves, uh, as I already mentioned, have examples regarding that. Um, it's really important. Also, prepare your own questions for the employee. That's an important thing. Um, as I already mentioned before, uh, if you review the job description, sometimes you have doubts on tools that you're going to use on the, your day to day, or if you have to know a specific um, knowledge or specific uh, develop a specific ability to that um to the day to day on the on the role so prepare your questions if you want to be in, interested we, we're going to see different type of questions further but if you're interested on how's the career regarding that role on the company that's also uh, an important question that you must not forget um on the on the interview you know you can write them down also, one of the things uh, we are always mention is to plan your journey. You know, sometimes um, nowadays we have two types of interviews, uh, remote or going um, physically to the, to the company. So we forget um, also to plan our journey to the interview, you know. Um, also, um, you know where, where you're going to park if you, you go by, by car. Um, if you're using public transportation, just take into account, you know, uh, the, um, the subway you're going to take or, you know, how the, the, the journey would be to arrive to the company, because sometimes we forget about that and, and we, you know, arrive late or we don't count on, you know, we have to park the car um, five streets 
um, no um, really far from the company and it, all of that also help us with the nerves um, uh, on being nervous on the, you know, the day before. So don't forget about also to prepare or think about the whole journey going mm -hmm. through um, the company um, or through, through that day on through the interview, you know. And then um, I would say um, the follow up. So um, it's the most important thing at the end. So that you do after the interview, you know, we're going to see it later. But if you call, you have to call the hiring manager or not. Um, I know that's really important. Thing. So we can go. Yes. So now we're going to go through the questions. Um, I know that um, this is the main, I would say this is the main part of the webinar. Um, so let's start to see. I would say that when we go through an interview, there are um, five types of information um, that uh, they go through along the interview as well. The first one is who and what you are. Um, you know, the recruiters and or the hiring managers really want to know um, about you, about your experience, um, who you are, to present yourself, uh, where you have worked, your um, actual, if you're working in an actual company, um, regarding all that is uh, who you are, you know. The second uh, type of information is what do you know about the role and uh, regarding the company, as I already mentioned. They also want to know if you already do a research, if you um, know the functions, uh, maybe you have um, some questions regarding that, and uh, and also how your skills and your experience um, apply regarding the role of the company and, and, and the position you're applying for. You know? Then they would like to know about your skills, specifically about your skills. We're going to see in the next slide um, the different samples of interview questions. There are different types of also of um, specific questions there go through uh, the interviews so that they can um, highlight your skills. They can know if you are the person for the um, the right person for the job. And so that's really an important type of information. Also, it's your ambitions, your expectations, what you're looking for, where you hope for this job, where you hope for the position. Um, you know, also not only about the job overall, but specifically, you know, regarding also um, economic expectations or social benefits expectations as well. Perks expectations, they also go through, um, through the interview. And the last thing is um, how investable you are, as if um, I say specifically, if they, they will ask, no, they will try to know if you are a good investment for the company and the role, you know, if you are the person, um, why why you could be that the right person for the role, you know, if, if they are going to hire you, what you're going to add to the position or the role as well. So if we go to the next slide, um, we can see the samples of um, different types of um, questions on the interview. We have four types of um, interview questions um, besides the information that the five types of information they're going to ask. Um, the main questions that they're they're going to do are going to go through these um, four. Yes, these are going to go uh, through these four samples. The first one is the behavioral. Um, this is the one known as um, com competen competency, sorry, based questions. Um, they are used to interviewers to assess a specific attributes, knowledge, and behavior. Um, for example, um, a recruiter is looking to understand more about your behaviors, um, what they need you to be successful in a job. Um, they will ask you um, about different ways in which you, you use maybe your analytical ability in a previous role to solve a specific problem. No, that's uh, uh, an example. When we talk about situational um, interview questions, um, we are more, they are more, more, sorry, main focus on specific scenarios that you could um, 
the guy you can considerably await uh, in the role. They seek uh, to determine um, how you provide um, uh, for um, the different skills and experience to focus on a given, you know, hypothetical situation and how you can or you would handle it as well. Um, the subject matter expert specifically focus more on technical questions um, related to the role. You know, if, if you have a uh, known specific knowledge, technical knowledge, uh, technical skills, you have to know a specific program. Um, they're more related to that. And the general ones that are usually questions focus on the culture and values of the company. In some cases, personal questions, maybe as they want to know a little bit more about your hobbies and in personal interest to get to know a little bit more um, about your about your about you and or the candidate as well. So in the next slide, um, we're going to see different types of um, questions uh, regarding situational, behavioral and competency based. I, um, um, I will I want to brought you um, a quick quick examples of um, each one of them. Um, you're just going to have um, the presentation. So you can go through them, but as I already mentioned, the situation now is regarding a specific moment where they can they want to look out um, how you respond uh, to that situation, um, the, the if, how you can manage yourself um, in in a future if you present yourself in that situations, um, the behavioral behavioral one. Um, when it could be, can you tell you, you know uh, about a time when you had to deal with a stressful situation? They want to look out for your specific out for your skills, how you manage that situation. Um, if you're working in a group, maybe the role requires you to work with different kinds of areas or with different kinds of persons within a group. Probably they want to know how you manage every day your situation. That's why I am always saying that give examples. It's really important real examples about uh, past experience or your actual job that also talk about your skills in a real time. And um, the competency base uh, regarding a specific also knowledge or um, ability, they they want to know that applies for the job that you develop or have the experience already. Um, an example could be tell us about the time when you have had failed and achieved uh, to achieve something or uh, a goal. So what did you do No, How can you manage that? OK. So now let's explore how best to address and answer these questions. And we are going to see that the um, really um, the STAR method is a, a really a methodology that we can use to address um, these specific um, questions and how to answer them. And we can manage, uh, as I already mentioned at the beginning, it's important to give context to the recruiter or the hiring manager. Um, it's always important about uh, uh, briefly uh, set the scene, talk about the situation that you uh, manage, um, uh, that, you, that it presents yourself. Um, also, the important thing is to talk about the task um, um, as well. Um, I would say um, you can give an example and explain what was your main responsibility, what was the situation, and um, what do you have, what was the main goal as well. Um, then you can you can go to the action one. Describe um, what did you did specifically um, regarding the situation you have to uh, go through and and the task and focus also on the contribution to the to the task specifically. Um, what did you do? Um, not, not what your colleagues do. That's what I was saying at the beginning. That talk always in first person. And um, also the results about regarding um, the situation and the task. If you manage to um, go further through the goal or to the objective, or if you don't um, go through the objective as well, um, it's important that if you don't go through the objective as well, um, you can also um, talk about the learnings that you have regarding the situation. That's really an important tip that sometimes when we don't know how to ex um, explain um, or address this type of question, we're going to see it, but sometimes we're not also manage ourselves to um, 
uh, go through a uh, result that we're expecting. But one thing we can do is um, be transparent about the situation, but talk about the learnings that you um, got regarding that situation. That, that's really an important thing, how you manage the situation and how you will do it the next time if you get the same situation as well. Okay. So, um, I know we are going to the final part of the webinar, but as I was saying, um, this is all about questions. And I know the most that the scares of, scares of is the tough questions. I know it seems easy um, that you have to choose what you're going to say. Um, sometimes um, the important, uh, one of the important things I also would like to share with you is what you're going to speak about uh, when you're answering the questions is that um, sometimes the, it's information that is not on your um, CV. Um, but remember that the elevator pitch always helps uh, to present ourselves um, and also um, to go further through these questions that are sometimes the really tough ones. Um, I would say the main ones that it, sometimes it's really tough is to present ourselves. No, that's what I was saying. But you can all you can always remember to um, practice your elevator pitch. That's uh, a way to address this one. Um, other question uh, can be what are your weaknesses? Um, that's a really um, main question that most of the recruiters do. It really goes um, through the, the next one that how you will, would you how would your colleagues describe you? You know, sometimes they don't ask you directly about what are your weaknesses. But they do ask, like, how would you uh, think your colleagues describe you um, to give context about how they feel working with you as well? No. Also, um, tell me about a situation that did not turn you out as expected, as I was mm -hmm. mentioning before. Um, it talks about how you handle failure. Um, I will I will say that it's important to be transparent. And you can talk about the situation, even though it was um, not turned out as expected. But if you talk about the learnings that you have about the situation, that's going to give a different perspective to the hiring manager or the recruiter as well. Um, this is a tricky one. What did you like the most and what did you like the least about your last job? I always suggest that not to criticize um, the the your last job not to put it like in a negative way um because um, that doesn't speak um in a good way about your profile i would say always talk about learning um you can talk about things that maybe you found in a difficult or you can also mention that it could be things that were not aligned to your values as well because that's it, it could happen we can be in a job that doesn't feel right um, but if you put the focus on that uh, regarding the answer, it sounds different than criticizing the company as well. Um, I would say it's not a good thing to um, go through that um, answer. Um, also, uh, a tricky one could be describe a time where you had a difficulty or conflict within a team. Um, always, I would say, um, describe the situation. You can be uh, transparent on on talk about how you manage and the parts regarding the, the, the situation as well, what was the main difficulty, but how um, you can talk about how you manage and how you can do it different if you present yourself again in that situation. And um, the most important one, I would say it's a tricky one also, it's like why they should hire you. And um, I always suggest that you always go not only through your elevator pitch, but to highlight what you're going to ask through your ex uh, regarding your experience through the role. Um, that's uh, a way to go through this question as well. The, the thing that they are looking for with this uh, question is to know more about specifically your experience and how you're going to do the things on the role, specifically for the for the, the necessity they're having on the on the position. So now we can see questions that you can ask the employer. Um, there are different kinds of questions. Um, I would say before going through these examples, remember um, again, um, go through the job description, go through the, the through the role, 
that it's important for you to feel, you know, the secure that you understand all the functions, all the responsibilities you're going to have. So if you're not, if, you're, if you still have doubts, um, you can, you know, write them down and ask them on the, on the interview as well. Sometimes I would say that recruiter doesn't have all the information about the position. Sometimes there are specific questions regarding maybe technical abilities or specific um, functions that maybe they maybe the recruiter doesn't know, but um, maybe you can manage to transmit it to them or you can ask them as well, like, OK, can I ask you these kind of questions or um, can I ask um, regarding the recruitment process? I will have the opportunity to ask them to a um, hiring manager or a person from the team um, because I, I, I really would like to know, you know more about this information. It, it's not bad to, you know, uh, question uh, to the recruiter or, or mention that to them. So how would you describe the responsibilities of the position? Um, what they are looking for in a candidate, that um, it's also an um, important thing that you can ask. Um, what are the biggest challenge of the job and the role? That's a really important one and, and and a good one, I would say, because sometimes, as I already mentioned, we don't have all the information about the role. And um, doing this uh, question specifically, sometimes they could give us more information about the day to day. Also, if they could describe us a typical day in the position. One, what is the most important thing maybe that you should know or that you should accomplish in the first 90 days? You know, it's like the the they they we we know that on the first 90 days uh, we go further through the learning chip course so that's important thing maybe an important question that you should ask what they will expect from you from that days um and um i would say also if they come if you would like to know and it's important to you to understand what the are the the development plans for that role, um, how's the company going to grow, the projection the company has for the position and uh, for the company um, as well. That's important things. And also, how's um, uh, any examples of they could give you about career path? Maybe you can um, you have this um, interest on going um, to be from analyst. I don't know as an example from analyst to lead. Um, maybe an important question could be what are the ste steps or if they can give you examples of people that go are that go through this type of career path specifically to the position. And also you can ask about the company's man management style, you know, if it's horizontal, vertical, that's um, also an interesting question that you can do. OK. And the last part of our webinar and the last part of our interview process um, as well is the follow up. You know, most of you also um, ask yourself about the follow up. Um, if it's OK to send um, a follow up email, it's not. Um, in my experience, I will say a yes. It is a yes. You can send a follow up email. You can also send an email uh, given being thankful um, for the opportunity to so they can um, you know have the interview to they know your um, your experience your profile um, you can send that email the day after the interview it's an it's okay um, it's not a bad thing to do and also um, you can send this follow-up email sometimes we also ask ourselves which is the person uh, or the right person so to send this um, email, this follow up email. I always would say, well, not only the person, but the time. I always say that um, you, I would say you, I suggest that you wait at least um, two weeks because sometimes, you know, if they're big, you can ask as well, like um, in regarding next steps at the end of the interview. Um, which are the timings that they are managing for the recruitment process. Sometimes they're, they, they're really fast and they would say, OK, in a week, maybe you can have all the information. We can give you feedback. Sometimes you don't have like the, the whole. Sometimes they don't have the whole um, master, the whole recruitment process. So I would say two weeks is a really uh, good timing. If they are not reach you to tell you or give you feedback about the process, um, you can send an email um, after two weeks. 
um, because sometimes you know you have also always to think in in the recruiters um, or put yourself in that position. Sometimes they have a lot of interviews that week. Um, they have also not to see different candidates, but to go further with the area and talk about the candidates. You know, have this feedback with them, and sometimes it takes time. So I would say the the, the main time is two weeks, and. I would say always start with the recruiter first or the first person that um, keeps in touch with you. Sometimes it's the recruiter, the talent acquisition uh, coordinator or manager, um, someone from HR. Um, I always suggest be, um, before reaching the hiring manager, if you're not going for um, or have this um, already this uh, interview, first reach to the recruiter. And then um, if you already have the interview with the hiring manager, you can also um, send an email um, through the hiring manager, but just in the case that you already have passed that interview, that part of the interview process. Um, but I would suggest always reach out first to the recruiter. If you don't have any response, then you can reach out maybe to the, if you have the information that if you have already this interview, as I already mentioned, with the hiring manager, but first, I would say the recruiter, so you can. Um, it's always the fir the first person um, that always um, is used to get this type of emails as well. So I just want to say thank you, and maybe to um, have the opportunity. So if you, you would like to make some questions and give uh, this couple of last minutes. Um, to answer if you have any doubt. Um, I'm really glad to share a little bit more about my experience as a headhunter recruiter and now um, HR talent manager. Um, if you have like any specific questions. Um, but if not, Georgia is going to keep the slide so you can go more deep on through the information as well. We have one question, Bianca, from uh, Jose Luis. Yes. Yes. Go on. Yes, hello. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, yeah, Jose Luis. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, one question. Um, what about the weaknesses? Um, seems like a, a tricky question. And if you say something like, for example, oh, sometimes I procrastinate, maybe this is not good. So this question really. Uh, uh, makes you, in a sense, not to tell you completely the truth, or I'm, I'm wrong. No, um, that's an interesting question, um, Jose Luis. Um, I, I always suggest that it's not only what, what you talk about your weakness, but how you manage to express yourself regarding your weakness. One, one of the things that, we, that a recruiter or the hiring manager wants to know is what if you already identify that's a weakness, we can use the same as, uh, as you mentioned, or I can use about, for example, um, you present yourself as you lack um, organizational skills. Um, that's maybe it could be a weaknesses for the position. What are you doing to um, develop this skill as well? What are you if you're, you're going to uh, you're going to doing workshops, you're going you're doing um, uh, different kinds of courses. Or if you try to manage, you know, having an experience regarding this um, that helps you, you know, identify it. One of the things that recruiter wants to know is what do you do to manage to develop that skill in a positive way, I would say, not in a negative way. Is that you're also for sometimes a weakness could be in, in depending on the job, like I don't know specifically um, or I can speak in English in a fluently um, way. Um, how can you manage to overcome that weakness. You no, know, you are taking courses, you're taking classes, you're um, having conversational um, um, group teams after work. Um, so one of the things is the most important thing is not only to identify the weakness and express it, but what are you doing to uh, overcome that weakness as well. That's the most important thing that the recruiter wants to know. OK, and the is second question is, the second question is um, about uh, we can prepare ourselves for the interview, but but also the, the company prepare themselves for for the interview and probably they they look of, uh, about us on the on the web on the social media. 
So at this moment, do you know if the companies, uh, big companies are, are having some special intel artificial intelligence programs that are sharing about our past and they already know about us a lot or it's just an idea of myself? <laughs> That's also an interesting one. And I would say, as, I'm, as my experience working in different kinds of um, companies, it depends always on the company. When I used to work at L'Oreal, we don't use artificial intelligence, but I do know that depending on the area you were applying, uh, the hiring manager uh, loved to you know, look out for the profile, not only in LinkedIn, but, but maybe through Instagram as well. Um, but I would say um, that um, in when I used to work also in a um, construction company, um, they don't do that. So it depends on the company. It depends um, on how's the recruitment process. I would say the most important, maybe social media that you should maybe have uh, to have updated, it's LinkedIn as well, because it's the most professional one. Um, I would say nowadays that LinkedIn is our, it's, it's our CV in a digital way. So at least if you don't have like social media, like Instagram or Facebook or the other ones, at least have your LinkedIn up to date, because definitely that one well, is one of the tools that maybe the company it's gonna look out for besides your CV as well. Um, but I would say it depends always on the company. Some companies do it, some companies don't do it. And also I would say also, it gonna depends on the job and the position. So I'm, if you're applying maybe for a you know creative position, design uh, as a designer, maybe um, maybe they're gonna go through your um, projects. They wanna see a portfolio. They wanna see maybe um, if you you know uploaded something as a social media um, um, platforms. Um, but at least I suggest LinkedIn. Go through LinkedIn and update it as your CV as well. If I may add something on this, um, it, it, uh, many companies and many, many HR recruiters now use the applicant tracking system, the so-called ATS in short. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this is uh, where companies use to streamline their hiring, hiring process. Okay, it's an automated system that screens job applications, okay? And they scan through this software your CVs, okay? And they do this so that to save time. So make sure that your CVs contain the appropriate keywords, matching always the internship or the job description so that you can get a call for an interview because this ATS system saves them time because they do not have time the recruiters to review, I don't know, 100 applications. So the most important thing is to uh, do the same actually for your LinkedIn profile because, I was going to say that yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because they do that. So make sure that you use keywords that yes. match the job description that you are applying for. Let's say an example, let's say, marketing assistant, make sure that you have some marketing skills outlined there so that you can get selected for the interview. That's the, the main purpose. The main purpose is to ask you for an interview. That's a good thing. Yeah. And then you rock the interview through various other methods that uh, hopefully you get some chance to review today. We have a lot of questions. I hope that these ATS also um, I don't know, answer maybe your uh, question, Jose. And uh, if you need help with this, I can help you with uh, a counseling session that you can book with me. I think next was Amy. Yeah? Amy, are you? Hi, yeah, how are you? Hi. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, hi, Bianca, how are you? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I think Georgia answered a good bit of my question, which is for me personally, I find video interviews or in person is mm -hmm. where you can showcase your personality and what you can offer but I think it's how to have a I suppose be able to grab attention on paper is kind of the first step to get an interview is there anything in particular that yes stands out? 
I'm going to allow Bianca to say that and then maybe <laughs> add something on top of that. Yeah, yeah. Bianca, yes. go on. Yes. Um, thanks, Amy, for the question. Um, I would say two main, two main things. Um, the first one is we have to work our CV. Um, the, the recruiter has like two minutes or three minutes when they do the screen, as you just said. One of the things you can do is like work with keywords. We, that's one of the things we do in um, Pro Hire Me as well. We work through keywords regarding the position. Also, is that your CV um, has to be not similar, but has to have context regarding the position you're applying. So that key, that those keywords, you know, that you're using have um, context and conscious regarding the position you are applying. It's not like just putting them on the on the CV. Um, also, um, highlighting your achievements. What, what I mentioned before is um, you can use the elevator pitch structure to um, also pre summarize uh, yourself uh, and do this summarized presentation in the CD um, regarding uh, your main goal, um, your main skills, but also when you talk about the different experience you're going to present um, along of your um, work life, you should talk about um, achievements as well. And you, if you can talk in regarding those achievements and put specific like numbers, you know, percentage, um, um, how you get um, um, and how you support yourself uh, to get that goal um, that grabs the attention of the of the recruiter because it goes specifically to the achievements um, and it's like talking in, in first person as I mentioned um, for the position that you're applying. So go through through the achievements that you have. Um, yeah, so if I can add on this, mm -hmm. one thing that we generally advise when we do the CV reviews um, with um, most of you is that under your work experience section, just to be more precise, when you start explaining your tasks or your experiences, what I generally advise the students is to uh, link that task with an achievement. So, for example, let's say, let's do an example together, conducted market research to create the marketing strategy plan for the company, okay, which at the end of the day increased sales by 50%, okay? So, this is an example. Also, the keywords that we explained earlier, can be placed in the form of skills, okay? So you need to have a skills section in your CVs, okay? It can be soft skills, it can be hard skills, it can be computer application skills. These can be indicated there. And soft skills nowadays are equally, is equally important as hard skills. Hard skills, the difference is to be short, is skills that you have acquired through your learning, let's say, through your different modules, the program of study, and soft skills are your personal attributes, in a sense, okay, who you are, your traits, okay? Like leadership, By communication. Mm -hmm. Time management, detail-oriented, um, able for, you know, uh, troubleshooter, uh, fixer, or whatever, okay? These are skills that characterize you. Um, is that okay, Amy? Do you have any other questions on top of that? No, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Good. And then is uh, Rasik. Rasik, are you still with us? Yeah. Hi. Um, Hi. My name is Rasik. Uh, I'd like to thank Bianca for this wonderful uh, presentation. I have a kind of a, a, a weird question. Um, I'm from Serbia, so here uh, recruiters are asking uh, a lot of leading questions, uh, something along the lines of, uh, are you using our product? Or would you say that our product is better than this other product? So how do we defend ourselves from those questions? Do we just answer honestly or do we just... These like, are tough questions, wrong? Bianca, oh my God. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would say this is a tough one. <laughs> Um, thanks for, for the question as well. Um, I would say it's a tricky question one. So um, not, not that the, the question that you're doing, but the, as the recruiters are doing it to you, that's a tricky question because depending on the context, on the context, they would like to know if you're using the product or not. I would say you can be as transparent, but it, it should be like a neutral response, you know, because it depends always on the contact. When I used to work in L'Oreal, depending on the on the position, when we look out for 
marketing profiles, we do ask them specifically about the, the product um, on, as an assessment, no? We want to understand how they think about the product, if we are using them before, if they look out for, you know, the colors, and, and depending on the different type of job, um, if you're focusing, maybe that's an example, no, as a marketing profile, what they do want to know is your approach to the product to understand if you have already do a research or know, uh, you know, the product through the company as well. Um, so I would say first, it depends on the context about the position and the company. And the second one, I would say, if you know the product and you can try it, try it. If not, maybe you can be also like a neutral response, like, okay, I haven't uh, tried it as well, but I know that this product, and you can give information maybe about the product. No, it's not that you're not being honest, but um, at least you're not saying that you haven't seen it or you haven't touched it as well. You know, it's like that you don't know it, um, that it's like going you know, through the other um, side of the response of, the, of that question. But um, I would say this is a really interesting question, um, but it depends on the context. I would say for marketing profiles, we used to do it on the interview um, for category managers as well too. So um, I don't know what you're, um, um, what you're applying, uh, what you're, you're applying, what role, but I think maybe that's the most um, honest and transparent way to uh, maybe respond to that question. I don't know, Georgia, if you want to add. Well, to be honest with you, if I was to apply to a company that promotes product, let's say, I don't know, uh, an eyeshadow uh, or something for the men. Um, or the other one, for example. The other one or whatever. I would, uh -huh. and if I really wanted that job, I would certainly try their products. I would do the market research. I would know the competitors. I would yes. prep myself to show them that I really know what's going on in the market. And, um, but I wouldn't maybe give my opinion. I would be very diplomatic. Yeah, I wouldn't give like the opinion. Really neutral as well, yeah, like not yeah. going very non-specific, yeah. Yeah, a little bit diplomatic about the products. What we, you would say is that, of course, that applying to this job promoting these products made me apply because you like the products. This comes down to who you are. You wouldn't work for a company that you do not like the products. You won't be able to deliver. So you need to do your research, right? I wouldn't apply to a company that promotes products or services, let's say, going against my ethics or that I don't like them. How can you promote them? You cannot. So you should be made yourself aware of all the products or services they have and also know a few things about their competitors. Yes, okay, the that will make you yeah, differentiate, differentiate from the rest of the candidates if they are not in the position to know what's going on in the market with the relevant uh, products or services. We have, is that okay? Virtual? Yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the answer. Do you do you think how did you respond? Can you share with us when they made that answer? How did you respond? Let's fix that. Let's we this is why we're here. Do you want to share your response and how did they react on it? Maybe? Uh, well, I personally hadn't come across yet uh, to a company that asked me that, those questions, but I have a few friends that work in HR and okay. they had a training session recently where they specifically had to ask if the uh, the candidate is using their products. And mm -hmm. I asked them what do they expect from their answer and mm -hmm. they just said that they're trained to expect the, the best possible answer. So if they sell, for example, eyeshadow, um, it, it would be nice to see like that eyeshadow on, on them if if it's like a woman. So or if they sell like cologne for men, maybe if that if that candidate came with that cologne. So but if you said I don't I never heard of that product or I don't like it, they would ask you why don't you like it? And uh, then that's that's a grave you cannot come out of. <laughs> I think that's like instant failure, basically. So I, I was just in, interested in how that works globally, and if those questions are asked in like yeah. companies, yes, it's, it's a global yeah. phenomenon. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs>
Yeah, okay, can... thank, you, thank you both for, for the answers. It's, it's interesting to hear another point of view for that mm -hmm. question. I would like to add, Georgia, um, just really quick, and I would like to add that um, even though you haven't go to like a, a formal interview, sometimes a recruiter, when they call you, you know, to do this uh, quick screening call, they, they can ask you that question. So mm -hmm. as Georgia just said, um, if you know that you're applying for a product company specifically as well, do at least a bit of research before. So if they ask you that question, you're not be like in blank, you know, like at least you can understand and know the product they're talking about. Yeah. OK, uh, the next uh, Jose, you have another one. Oh, yes, yes, uh, I just have a last one. What about the attitude during the interview? Because mm. uh, I'm from Latin America and sometimes uh, I think that it's, it's good to have to smile during the interview or be nice. Uh, but I don't know if uh, you know you are in Europe, so I don't know if that is the same in Europe, uh, especially for a man. Who, can I can I smile or try to be empathetic and uh, and try to, at the end of the interview, you know, have a connection with the interviewer? Okay, that's an also an interesting question. Um, uh, um, I, I come from uh, Latin America, also Jose Luis. I understand why you're asking that. Um, I know, and I can tell it's uh, a little bit different. Um, but I will always before says depend on the context. You know, when you arrive to the interview, you can notice how the recruiter managed um, himself or herself uh, and presents it in the in the interview. You can sense a little bit. Um, if it's going to be a little bit more em empathetic or it's going to be a really formal one, I always uh, suggest that try to be formal before, even though um, I think it's the most important thing that always be formal. And um, it could be like you can relax a little bit if you if you see throughout the interview that the person maybe smiles, you know, maybe be more um, 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 we I forget how to say in English. Um, could be really close to like give you this closeness, no, during the interview, so you can uh, feel more comfortable. But if not, I would say go formal. And of course, at the end of the interview, if it's a really formal one, you can always smile a little bit. You know, maybe give uh, the the hand to the person to say thank you. That's uh, things that um, even though they are formal. They, they show you uh, and the recruiter a closeness uh, through the interview as well, but not, you know, like crossing that line. But I would say um, the main base always, um, depending on the context, is to be formal as well. You know, try to, um, you can smile, but not like a big smile, you know, because sometimes it could be, it could give like a different uh, um, 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 context to the person and, and you can maybe, um express other thing that you don't want to so i would say just keep it a little more formal um first of all and then you will see throughout the interview as well well if okay, i okay, may yeah if i may add uh, one of the things that um are very very important is body language during an interview yes. okay yes. so um you can smile with your eyes guys giving a positive attitude and a positive energy and selling your positive aura to the recruiter. So smile with your eyes. So it will also uh, limit the possibility of you looking nervous to the recruiter. It, it, if you smile with your eyes, like, you know, uh, you don't stare at them, but you have eye contact with the recruiter or the recruiters, all the persons within the within the interview room, let's say. So you try to have a good body language, being open, like not this, yeah? A positive uh, attitude to the recruiter, smiling, showing also at the same time that you are happy to be there. You yeah. want to get the job, okay? So you're selling yourself physically, mentally, okay? So um, having a positive attitude, a good um, posture, and uh, um, I forgot what I wanted to say, uh, eye contact, making eye contact, eye contact, contact but not staring, yeah. like not, exactly. yeah, not staring. I, I, I was it's, going to add that, Georgia, yeah. I didn't want to cut you, but uh, I think that uh, highlighting as you um, um, brought it to the conversation, 
One important thing, guys, it's in the interview, I, we don't mention it, but now Georgia is mentioning it, it's the eye contact. It's not like you stare to you know to that interviewer, but but um, when you're answering the questions, even though the tough ones, um, doing uh, answering them with direct eye contact, it's really an important thing because it trans um, your self confidence, as Georgia mentioned, like body language is really important. But it gives uh, you know the, that that you are secure on the answer that you're giving. So eye contact is really um, important in the interviews as well. Mm -hmm. And, and also, it's uh, the, a smile is universal. Everyone falls for a smile. Yeah. Yes, yes. So don't worry about the location. Smile upright should you, be fine. You, you can you smile. Can, you, can, you, can, you, can, uh, you can smile without like having, as we already mentioned, like this big yeah, smile yeah. Because, because it may be too much. Um, but of course, smiles are always welcome. And if you don't manage yourself like doing it throughout the interview because you don't feel it, because maybe the, you know, the, the recruiter is really serious because sometimes they're really serious, you know, mm -hmm. maybe at, you can do it at the end, like really yeah. natural one. That's better. Mm -hmm. Another thing that it was in our case in the past before COVID, a, a good handshake would do the deal. I don't know if people do the handshake anymore, but if they do, do a firm one, huh? not crushing the fingers of the recruiter, but do a firm. It shows that you're confident, a strong attitude and a strong character, if this is the case in some interviews. So allow the recruiter to see first when you make the introduction. If he goes for a handshake, go for it as well. OK. Uh, any other questions? I don't see any hands here. OK, so before we go, I want to share my screen again to you. And I want to take you through our career portal, which has a mock interview feature. OK, so through so I'm logged in as a student. This is what you see if you log in as a, a student. So you go into resources that you see. You see my screen, right? Yes. Do you? Yeah. OK, yes. so from here you click resources and then you go to mock interview. And I have a couple of interviews here that you can take with common interview questions, a marketing position, finance, accounting positions, internship, OK? And you can record your attempts. Unfortunately, I cannot show you now because I'm using my camera. When you do this, your camera will open. We have um, someone there who will give you, will make a question. And then you can record yourselves answering that interview question. When you click the submit button, your interview, your whole interview practice will come to me and then I'll be able to help you, maybe help you change the answer, your response to it. So you can practice a lot from this, from our career portal. So please use it. And also if you have an upcoming interview for a job, for an internship, you can book counseling appointments with me and we can go through interview preparation. OK, it can be me or it can be Bianca, it can be Bia, uh, Mia, one of our career coaches. We can refer you to them and they can prep you for interviews so you can name that job or internship. All right. And also one more thing in the resources section. Again, if you go to document library, if you scroll down, we have like 30 uh, resources here that uh, have how to make an elevator pitch. Bianca talked a lot about it before. So we have guidance on how you can create your elevator pitch, which is important. It's the first question, who you are, describe yourself, okay? And uh, so many other resources, uh, how to create your CVs. And uh, we will also post more soon interview guide here we have. OK, cover letter templates, how to master the virtual interview with the resources, how to network and so on and so forth. And we will include more resources for you, uh, for example, uh, a template of an email of how to follow up. OK, 
Okay. So that's it for me. Bianca, thank you. Thank you so much. No, for thank everything. you. Thank you and thanks for the invitation. Um, I was really pleased and glad to be here. Um, thanks to you. I hope it was to, helpful. <laughs> it was good to have you. Listen, this is only the beginning. It, it's our first uh, interview webinar, so we can do uh, many more in the future. So this is a beginning. It's an idea of what's going on in interviews, how to prepare. And then from then and on, we can help individually help each student who wants further help with interviews or job application materials preparation and so on and so forth all right thank you guys for being here thank you guys thank I will you forward, i will also forward um um let me turn off this first one second stop recording <laughs>